Hey guys, wanted to take a quick moment before this video starts to thank everybody that sent us calls and texts and emails and prayed for us. Last week we were basically being surrounded by water on all sides. They were projecting to have six to nine feet of water in our area. And, you know, we've been through a lot with Hurricane Harvey. We got like five or six feet in our house, depending on the level in there. And we had all of our stuff wash around and we had to throw it all by the street. It was a terrible experience. And so last week it started to feel a little bit like Harvey. And like I said, you guys, your outpouring of support was so important to us. We're so thankful. Uh, the reason why we couldn't bring out more videos and more coins last week, just because we lost power twice. We had to take everything up to the second floor that we could carry. And just to give you guys a perspective about Harvey, uh, I think the water was about up to here. I'm gonna show you guys some photos. Um, and there was water, you know, basically covered all of our cars during Harvey. And the funny thing enough was that we not only had to come and bring all of our stuff and rip it out and take it by the road, but we also had no cars. We couldn't drive anywhere. Uh, we couldn't go out to eat. We had to come here every day, work 12 to 15 hours picking up our stuff, putting it by the road, and taking photos of it and putting it in a spreadsheet for the insurance company. And so, you know, being able to survive last week and everything being fine was a huge relief, but it couldn't have been that way without you guys supporting us like you do. And so we're so thankful for that. Let's get this video started. What's up guys, Drew with Kush Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna show you guys a collection that has been touched in decades. And we just ended up purchasing it all. And we're gonna show you guys just the cool little things that you guys should look out for when you're buying a coin collection. But let's start off with something really awesome. You're not gonna see this very often. I've never seen it myself personally. But you guys know those uh, proof sets that you can buy from the US Mint in the 50s and the 40s? Well. Right here, as you can see, these are actually nine 1951 proof sets in the original mint packaging. And this one was ordered for directly from the mint. I'm not going to show you the collector's name, but it was shipped to New York. And there are the stamps. And it's just a really cool piece of numismatic history. And it's cool to be able to hold them. They're actually all sealed still, which is pretty neat. But he not only had 51s, he also had 52s and 53s. And so when I open up this one, he actually cut it open like that a while ago and left it up in his attic. These are uh, 52s, all 10 of them, all sealed. I think actually one might be open just to check the date. That was 53s. All the same way, so. It's just extremely cool to be able to see stuff like that. And we also have a bunch of raw coins that we're going to show you guys in this video. This is the stuff that's uh, just a little bit more of the premium stuff. A Black Eagle note, uh, a few large size notes in there, some coal dollars, some better type coins. But let's show you guys kind of the crux of the deal. The thing that made the deal uh, the best for us and for the client Whenever you're buying a deal, you're wanting to pay someone up front with all the stuff that's kind of the more expensive, the weight, the, the meat of the deal, which is in this case, bullion. So we have a bunch of 90% that we're ending up dropping it off to uh, a customer tomorrow. And this is the 90% we ended up buying from this customer. So if you guys are passing by this counter, we actually counted a lot of this 90% in this. I think Casey got this for a good deal on Facebook Marketplace, and it didn't cost us very much. But we're also show you guys some slabs later in this video, just some better graded coins that he got back and wanted to sell us. But here's the 90% that we're dropping off tomorrow. So I think, you know, I think there's almost it's like 17.5 and. $17,500 in silver in here. Just from the deal that we constructed. Added some of our own silver in there, added the client silver. And uh, this sucker's heavy. We got two bags of this. And uh, very fortunate to be able to, I don't know, hold this silver in your hand. It's basically wealth. You know, This is wealth that we get to own for a short period of time and then pass on to someone that, you know, is gonna hold it for a lot longer than us. And uh, I don't know. 
whenever you get to hold silver or gold in your hand, uh, I don't know, you gotta be very thankful, but let's show you guys some more cool things about this coin deal. When you see original bank rolls of Lincoln cents from the bank, the bank is actually stamped on it. There also, when you look at both sides of the roll, you can see how crispy and original and nice they are. I mean, this is an original roll of, of steel cents that was assembled together. Kind of low grade, you know, and stuff's just start to happen to this coin, but that's okay. Just more steel cents. Forty-five S Lincoln cents in original rolls. Uh, also, when you're talking to somebody about the source of their collection, ask them as many questions as possible. So when we started talking to this client originally, he said, "Hey, I have a bunch of higher-end nice coins. What should I do with them? Should I just sell them to a shop, or should I uh, get them graded?" And I said, "Man, get them graded because at least we'll be able to both agree on a grade, be able to come to a price that we both can." You know, work together on. The source of the collection is very important. When you're buying a collection from somebody, you need to start to ask them as many questions as possible. When was this collection started? Where was it held? Where did the person that had this collection buy most of the stuff from? And what we've come to know about this collection was it was assembled by his great-grandfather and over time he started to assemble sets of Lincoln cents, Buffalo nickels, Indian head cents, just like these, right? And he also started to take original rolls from the banks. And he also had some higher end coins as well. You know, when you're looking at a collection that is quote unquote unsearched, which means it has been searched, a lot of the best stuff is already gone. It has already been withdrawn from the collection and now it's being redressed as an unsearched collection. And so when we bought about 80 or 90 of his more premium coins that he got back from PCGS, this was kind of the end of the line for this collection. And so since we knew the origin, since we knew it was unsearched, since we knew it probably sat in an attic for about 70 years since it, it was being assembled, we knew that this collection should be looked through and see if we found anything that would be, you know, add some premium past just the silver or, you know, the Lincoln scent premiums that you can send these to the wholesalers for. And so we're going to show you really quickly one thing that we found in all this and uh, it'll show you that this coin collection has been unsearched and also uh, you know it'll be a little bit of a surprise for the client and for us. So as you can see on the countertop here we start to separate things into you know wheat cents, face value and also buffalo nickels and also war nickels. So everything has its own premium, everything will be sold probably to wholesalers because we just don't have clients for it. They have clients for it. And uh, so when you're starting to break down a collection, you gotta assemble things into certain piles so that you can one day ship things to wholesalers. I know that, uh, you know, wholesalers, for example, with wheat cents, they they want 5,000 at a time, right? And so different shops, they say, hey, once we hit 25,000, we're gonna send all of these to the wholesalers. Or once we hit 100,000 wheat cents, we're going to send these all to the wholesalers in 5,000 pound or 5,000 bags, right? And so, uh, you know, when you're buying collections, you don't necessarily need to mess with this stuff right away, but you at least need to get the client paid and also start to put these in different buckets so that they can be sent out over time. Um, and so, a little thing to talk to you guys about. So, we were looking through everything, and there is this Johnson's travel kit. And so we were looking through everything and I opened this up and there is probably like, you know, 30, 40 coins in there. And I start to look through every single date. I flip one Indian head sent over and this is what I found. We found this 1877 Indian head sent. And uh, the way that we know that's legit is that it's a little bit weak on the end, on the reverse. And so, you know, looking through pocket change, wheat cents, Jefferson nickels, war nickels, Looking through all that stuff sometimes amounts to something and sometimes tells you, hey man, this probably hasn't been searched. It may have been looked through by the grandson, but there are some things, some nuances that haven't been found. And so we're going to give the client a call and we're just going to give them some extra money on top.
probably, uh, you know, most of the value again. We'll probably submit this to PCGS. And when it comes back, we'll sell it to you guys. So something cool for the client and for us. And uh, it keeps you going, you know, keeps the adrenaline pumping because you look through you look through a thousand Lincoln cents, you know, and you're like, man, just one, one of these. I just need one to, to come through here, you know. And so here's some other cool stuff that we found. Um, nothing that's crazy in terms of premium. We just kind of pulled out some better Buffalo cents. Uh, we also found a few toned Jefferson nickels that are war nickels. They're actually on the back of a frame. They have frame toning. I might just submit those to PCGS just for fun, see what the true views look like. I'm probably not going to get a whole ton of value um, for those, but always a little bit of an adventure. Got some large scents here that really don't demand a ton of premium. You know, probably sell these for like a few bucks each at a show, but you know, just the little things that you may never be able to run into, and you never know what you find when you open up things and uh, things jump out at you like this 1893 Isabella Quarter. Um, it's, you know, just like a VF or whatever. It's been cleaned before probably, but a neat little coin for sure. There also is this, uh, this, this uh, seated dime. And people got a little fancy with it on the reverse. There also is some more world silver here. Nothing crazy in terms of value, just something neat to show you guys got this brass metal probably not worth anything either but I don't know opening up things looking at different bags being able to show you guys just kind of the uncertainty the mystery you know sometimes when you wake up to go to work you know exactly what you're gonna do you know where you're gonna sit you know where you're gonna eat for lunch you know when you're gonna drive home but sometimes you have to look at things and go wow I didn't expect that Wow, this is something new and exciting, and I get to learn more about it. And uh, that's what coin dealing is all about, really. Here's some cool things that we ended up buying off the get. So we bought most of the premium stuff up front, and like we said, we're going to probably sort the rest of this for you guys. But I haven't really even touched these yet too much. So we have just two large size $1 bills. I could tell that they haven't been ironed or messed with before. They have been folded over many, many times. But you could see that there's that rich blue color still coming through, that rich black color still coming through, especially in the portrait there. And uh, this black eagle note, it's got a little bit of a chunk ripped out top right there. But once again, you could just see how intense and vibrant the black is and the blue is. And, uh, you know, got a little staining on the, on the back of the note. But, you know, just some cool things like that. We also have uh, some raw coins we're going to show you guys really quickly. And we're also going to show you some graded coins as well. And just to keep the video rolling. And uh, we hope you enjoy them. So this is an 1826 cat bust half. You can just see by that light luster in the background. Gorgeous originality. I mean, the coins that you really want to pick up on. And once again... I felt like this coin collection was unsearched just based on how nice and original these coins are. We have this 1818 cap plus half. A little bit of luster sitting in the background. A little bit of an earlier date with some premium to it for sure. This one is a little bit of a lower grade, probably a VF, VF25. But something we're just going to submit to grading, see what happens with it. Get a nice photo and uh, offer it to you guys when it comes back. Here's an 1874. I believe this is a San Francisco trade dollar. Once again, that luster peeking through on the background there still. Great detail. Lovely. Just little bits of luster that I just love to see. Here's a 1946 Iowa commemorative half. Rather problem free. Um, you can see kind of that toning that started to go a little bit dark, but I do think this coin is worth grading just to see what it come back as. If it's a 65, maybe a 66, we'll probably do okay. If it comes back anything higher, which is likely unlikely, um, that's just the way it'll go. But, you know, it's good to see your grading eye. I think that coin's probably a 65 or a 66. This is a 1936 Long Island commemorative half. Very problem-free surfaces. Strike seems pretty strong. Most of the time when you're looking at strike, you're looking at that hairline between the cheek 
and the hair on uh, the front portrait. And the luster is pretty strong also. And when you flip this coin over, you can see just a beautiful strike, beautiful luster. Just a nice looking coin. We have this 1818 cap bust quarter. Maybe he was working on a quarter and a half set before he kind of kicked the can on it. And uh, he just passed on making more of these and wanting to collect more of them. Because you can see the 1818 back here and this 1826. But these quarters are really tough to come by, so I don't blame him for not wanting to continue the set. And uh, once again, great detail, great originality, nice dark and beautiful. Then we have this 20 cent piece. This is an 1875S. I mean, you can see the toning coming through. You can see the originality peeking through. These are what coins are supposed to look like. Not over dipped, no scratches, no hits, just pulled out of circulation when he found them. And I mean, wow. I mean, just wow. Love them. 1827 cap bust half. Once again, same story, a little bit darker, but that's okay. No really big issues other maybe than that darkness right on the shield. That might be environmental, something that filled back in right there after the metal got eaten away, but yeah, nice little piece. And the last rock one I want to show you is uh, this 1854 $3 gold piece. Great luster peeking through again. This is probably an XF or an AU. It's going to be hard to pick up on, but people love $3 gold pieces. I'd say it's one of the staples of American early gold and, uh, you know, apart from the St. Gaudens and all that, but I think this one is just nice and beautiful, and I'm so glad I'm able to show you guys this coin also. All right, guys, the first coin I want to show you that is graded is this 1934 Texas commemorative half. Nice orangish reddish color on the obverse of the coin came back 67 for the client and they ended up selling it to us once again it's a great idea to send things in even if you have a chance of losing something at least you can learn from it here's a 1935 connecticut commemorative half and 66 plus it will be sending this to cac before it's being offered nice little rim toning great detail a few little hits but overall great coin then we have this 1913 two and a half dollar gold piece, graded mint state 62. So he wanted to assemble a gold dollar, a two and a half, a five dollar, and a three dollar. And uh, he ended up saying, hey, let, I'm just gonna let it go. And I'll let you guys offer it to your clients, which is really nice of him. Then we have this 1852 gold dollar. It's graded AU 53. Nice remaining luster, a little bit of a dark spot right here. Maybe from some tar or something like that. Then we have my favorite of all the coins we picked up from him, which is this 1857 $3 gold piece in AU50. Just look how it has that nice kind of reddish, orangish color to it. Just classic originality. And when you kind of compare it to a different coin, you could see how sometimes these are a little bit more white. And this one has a beautiful kind of toning to it. A lot of gold just doesn't tone. So when it has that nice orangish original color to it, it really uh, excites us and gets us excited to show you guys as well. Then we have this 1895 $5 gold piece just to round out the set. Raymond State 62. Yeah, a common gold coin, but cool nonetheless. Then we have a few coins that we picked up on our own that we want to show you guys in this video. This 1892 Colombian commemorative half with some nice greenish color on the obverse. Not a lot of commems tone very nicely. And this one has some great trivies and does demand a premium. We also have this 1909 Barber half in Mint State 64. CEC approved OGH holder. A little bit of a gray or matte looking finish to it and uh, just a beautiful looking type coin but thank you guys for taking a look at the raw and the graded coins let's see what else we can find in this tote just to show you guys you know a little bit more of the collection pull out this bag this kind of just looks like more face value jefferson nichols 
you know, small little rolls. I have to open these up just to see if they're war nickels or not. A lot of these were kind of, you know, 50s, mid 40s, but in that war nickel time period, that's when, uh, you know, that's when there's some silver in them and they can still demand a premium, especially over the face value that is today. Um, looks like we got some more Lincoln cents in either handmade rolls or bank rolls. So it looks like sometimes when you're looking through these, people used either just random pieces of paper to roll things up with, like this red roll right here, or they use things to break down denomination. So you can see that this one says 50 cents into one cent. So there's 50 cents in here. And then the collector was very nice and kind to be able to break down each roll for us. Uh, he looked through them all and just uh, want them to be a little bit easier. We ended up pulling out this bag. So this is all, I believe, war nickels. And they're all in pretty much the best shape possible. I'm pro they're probably been wrapped right after they were made. And uh, I'm, I'm sure most of these are, are BU condition. We do have some more older coins here. So there's this old box where he kept most of his Liberty V nickels in. I already looked through these for better dates, but once again, these do demand some premium over uh, what's to be expected. And, you know, a neat little thing to look through. Then we have some more Lincoln cents, more Jefferson nickels, 1939 PD and S. So this, these were assembled. Once again, you could see by that paper, and you could see uh, how old the tape is on the roll. Once again, when someone wants to say something is unsearched, that's not necessarily true. You need to look at all the clues that are being offered to you. If someone's using brand new tape in a brand new roll, and they're putting one Jefferson nickel with uh, a mint mark saying it's a war nickel at the end and saying it's unsearched, that's much different than saying someone using their own paper from 50 years ago from tape for 50 years ago when they assembled this roll and now they're putting it into a Ziploc baggie. That's much different, right? We have more Lincoln cents here, which is cool. Let's see what else. I think this is a Brown Ike. 1972 Brown Ike. Silver. We have more Lincoln cents to look through here. It looks like he broke them down. You can also see how old and flimsy this paper is. You can almost see through this paper now. But 1910 to 1919, broke it up into the teens for us, which is cool. I don't think I want to spend any more time on this box. Let's look over here a little bit. So this is the Lincoln cents that we started with so far, I believe. So we're just getting everything into its own bag, and then we're gonna basically run it up and count it and see how many Lincoln cents are at the end, how many Buffalo nickels, how many uh, you know Liberty V nickels there are, uh, how many War nickels there are, and then we'll just multiply it times that, and we'll let the client know how much we can offer them. And so that's just the Lincoln cents so far. Here's the Buffalo nickels that we have out so far. We looked through all the dates, pulled out many, any, you know, AUBU type of thing. Sometimes there's a little bit of a premium for that. And a lot of stuff ended up coming in, in bags like this. And we just already sorted them. So National Pressure Cooker Co. So I guess they sent a little fancy bag maybe with uh, an extra tool in one of these and he just used it to put coins in. Here are some more buffalo nickels that we have to count up. We just left them how they were. Some are corroded, some have issues. He just picked them all up along the way and then he put them in this box and uh, they came from all different types of environments. Like I said, there's sometimes there's corrosion, sometimes there's no date, sometimes there's you know better looking coins. So. They, uh, you know, we're just picked up along his coin collecting journey back in the day. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts um, just on the coins we had to show you and the collection. 
and the tips that we gave. Make sure to subscribe. Coming out with videos every single week. We want you to be a part. 8,000 subscribers. We're pretty much there. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate your support. And we'll see you guys in the next video.